We're here at ITU Telecom World 2016 in Bangkok, and I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Fatima Barras, who is chair of Anacom's Board of Directors. Fatima, great to see you in the studio today, and thanks very much for joining us again. It's a great pleasure to be here, and uh, of course, as usual, I'm very pleased to talk to you about what's going on in Europe. Brilliant. Now, um, in fact, Europe is, is uh, my first question here. I wanted to ask you about the Digital Single Market Initiative. Perhaps we could talk about how Europe's uh, Digital Single Market Initiative has brought down barriers to unlock uh, digital opportunity. Right. So this Digital Single Market Strategy was launched by the European Commission last year. And I think that the main objective of the European Commission is somehow to... Uh, develop a strategy in such a way that uh, Europe is able to take advantage of uh, all the benefits of the digital of the digital world in order to boost the economic growth. And uh, the central issue, at least from what uh, concerns um, the regulators for uh, electronic uh, tele uh, electronic communications, is of course um, what is related to. Uh, broadband connectivity. So I would say that what is central for the digital uh, single market strategy is connectivity. And th this is probably the main concern of the European Commission right now, is, and is also the main concern for uh, the European member states. Um, with this broadband connectivity, you are able to connect the, the, entire, the entire territory and to avoid the, um, the digital divide in Europe. And this is central and is connected to what the, the Commission just uh, um, did, that is to launch new targets for the digital agenda for Europe, and also to launch a new code for electronic communications, which means that in the future we will have a new regulation for electronic communications, that somehow will stay in place till 2025. How will the European Commission's new regulatory package meet the challenges of the future? Well, that's a, a good point because, as I told you, uh, connect, broadband connectivity is central. And when we talk about connectivity, we talk about both fixed networks and 5G, so mobile connectivity. And what is important from the Commission point of view is to ensure high-speed uh, broadband access to everybody. Um, the main challenge, I would say, is uh, uh, the balance between investment, the investment you need in order to achieve this connectivity on one side, and on the other side uh, to keep the level of competition among operators that you have right now in, uh, in Europe. Uh, somehow the success of regulation in Europe was to ensure a high level of competition among operators. Some people say there are too many operators in Europe. And uh, we say, well, this is the success of regulation because we were able to break down the entry barriers and to allow new players to come into the market. And because there is competition, prices are quite affordable and there are incentives among operators to, to, to invest. The question is that on these more challenging areas, how can we ensure that there will be incentives to invest from one side and on the other side there will be still competition? And I think that the main concern of uh, the European Commission in this sense was to ensure this type of balance. Namely, they put a uh, lot of emphasis on access, access to networks. And uh, I would say that in this new approach, the Commission is trying to get what they call a smart regulation. So, not using the old remedies that was just identifying the operator with significant market power and imposing him the remedies of you must give access to, to, to your competitors, but try to get a different type of regulation, like starting by the deepest la layer, saying first 
you must, you regulator, you must ensure that uh, operators give access to ducts and pools to civil infrastructure in order to reduce the cost of deployment uh, new generation networks. And also the Commission is looking at other uh, issues like co-investment agreements, commercial agreements, and also to some types of symmetric regulation. And what are the key initiatives uh, underway to accelerate the uptake of broadband and move towards digital societies? And in fact, I wanted to ask you, how has Portugal in particular had uh, such success in uh, fibre to the home development? Well, what has been interesting about uh, Portugal is somehow we are quite in advance in what <laughs> relates the, the recent proposals of the European Commission. Because in fact, we started by... Um, imposing access to ducts and pools. Uh, exactly what the Commission is now uh, advising uh, regulators to do. But we did it in 2006, so uh, much in advance. And with this type of regulation, we were able to uh, reduce the deployment costs. And uh, some estimates say that these costs can be about 80% of the total costs of deploying networks. So uh, by imposing this, um, this uh, access to ducts, uh, to the ducts of the historical operator, so the incumbent, we were using a kind of asymmetric regulation. But also there is a law in place that imposes also symmetric regulation, which means that any infrastructure like utilities, roads, railroads that can host electronic communication networks are obliged to give access. So uh, given these, uh, there is a kind of level playing field for all operators because the conditions are almost identical. Anyone that wants to invest, that wants to deploy networks, they have access to ducts and uh, pools at, um, at the same level. Um, so this was very important to give in the right incentives for the, for the operators to invest. On the other side, we had strong competition among the cable operator and also the incumbent operator. And from this strong uh, competition, of course, um, they, they had the right incentives to invest. And today, we have three big networks, uh, one of cable and two of FTT, uh, FTTH, uh, that compete against, against each other, which is quite, uh, uh, quite extraordinary in Europe, because infrastructure-based competition is what uh, the European Commission is looking for, and is what we have in place right now. We also have a fourth operator that is a cable operator uh, of a small, smaller uh, scale, but uh, is also um, putting some competitive pressure on the market. So I would say that the main, the main uh, uh, factors for success in Portugal were essentially the um, civil infrastructure access regulation on one side and the strong competition on the other side. So I think that this statement that says that uh, uh, competition drives investment is the reality in Portugal. Now you took part in the leadership summit yesterday here at ITU Telecom World. I wanted to find out what were your key takeaways from that? Well, I, what was interesting is that we are all looking for the same. We are all facing the same uh, challenges. Let's say we are all looking for um, broadband connectivity. We are all looking to avoid the digital divide. Um, we are all looking at the challenging areas that are essentially the rural areas. Just the scale of the problems is so different. I mean, comparing what we are facing in Europe or what I'm facing in Portugal, what the Indian regulator is facing in India, it's really amazing, but what is really important is that the, our concerns are the same uh, and we can learn from each other and I think this is the great thing. 
And finally, a little bit of promotion for ITU Telecom World, but just what, what, why is it good to be here? What, what makes it special? First of all, we are in this part of the world this year, and, uh, and of course, we learn about uh, many things of different markets that probably uh, we don't have the chance to, to meet the people or to learn about these markets every day. So this is important. On the other side, Asia is, in Asia, things are happening so fast and so quickly that it's also great to, to see what's going on. And again, we are learning from each other and sharing our best practices. And um, this is the best thing of putting all these people together. Fatima Barris, thank you very much indeed. It was my pleasure.